it would be completed by dr r saumya and after that we will be having oral presentations and it will be concluded by the distribution of certificates and valedictory function we are moving on to our first session i invite dr manida tk assistant professor and hod department of zoology mgm college udupi for her topic a tale of giant african snail introduction spread and management in kerala i invite marin thomas to introduce our resource person Good morning, Good morning, Manan. Manan. It's my pleasure to invite to invite today's first session, first session person, person, Dr. Manila Tiki, who is currently working as assistant, assistant professor and it's HOD of the Department of Mahatma Gandhi Memorial College, College Udupi, Karnataka. She was graduated in zoology from NSS College, College Mangalore and obtained, obtained post-graduate post from SN College, College, College Alatur. She completed her PhD in 2018. ജനറ്റിക്കോജിജി She completed the project on developing a sample methodology for the snail Acacia felica and to estimate the population size in infested sites of Kerala in 2017 and diversity of diversity of insects in Udupi district Karnataka in 2022. She has many publications on management of biological invasion, a case study of the giant African snail Acacia felica in Kerala and in occurrence of lack insects and its host plant in three south indian states and pondicherry union territory she got the best paper award for presenting the research paper titled management of biological invasion a case study of a giant african steel acacia felica in kerala she was honored as the member of board of studies in mangalore university now i welcome dr manila tk to talk us talk us about a tale of giant african snail introduction spread and management in kerala hearty welcome ma'am a very good of good morning to all and all present here first of all i would like to thank department of zoology and botany for inviting me to this program special thanks to dr bijoy c and dr saumya r so today i would like to talk you about giant african snails specifically on its introduction spread and management in kerala so giant african snail it is the common name of acacia fulica which belongs to the family acacinidae of gastropoda and from the name itself we can understood it belong to east africa its native range is east africa specifically to kenya and tanzania region but it has been introduced to many other countries outside its native range that is specifically we can tell about 66 countries it has been invaded in south asia in southeast asia pacific and caribbean due to the impact caused by this snail it has been recorded as world's 100 one among the world's 100 worst invasive species by global invasive species database in this map you can find the global distribution of acacia fulica its first introduction outside its native range was to india that is in 1847 and after that it has been introduced to many other countries here 
in this map you can see the snail infested points in india this record is based on the report in 1992 here you can find many uh, southern states and eastern st states are affected by this snail but all the points are not included this is based on the data in 1992 as i told its first introduction was to india in 1847 a malacologist w h benson he on his trip to india from africa he took a but a um, some snails with him to present as a gift to his friend in calcutta and after that this friend it released it in chowringi garden in calcutta from there it start it spread so from calcutta chowringi garden it start to spread to the nearby other states now coming to kerala its first introduction to kerala was in 1955 as a part of research so this snail has been introduced to many places uh unintentionally as well as intentional purpose so first introduction to kerala was as a part of intentional that is as a part of research and the first introduction was to elapulli region in palakkad a resident an elapulli resident he brought this acacia fulica species for his study purpose and later after his study purpose he thrown this snail into the wild later this snail became a nuisance in elapulli region then as it became a menace to the people some people took this snail and they report it to the authorities but there was no response from the authorities so in anger to this what the people did they dumped some snails in the palakkad town region from during that time that is during 1969 70s the palakkad town especially in victoria college premises it was fully infested with this snail and at that time the authorities start to take a look on this problem and during that time in 1970s uh, d babu pol was the collector in palakkad and the municipal chairperson lakshmi narayana ayer they started eradication program to control this snail first what they did they um offered some rewards to the people that is for those people who are collecting the snail they give one paise per snail but later they realized that this will affect the treasury and they stopped that cross program after that they in collaboration with rotary club they started eradication campaign by using salt to control this snail and it was uh success to an extent but they couldn't eradicate all the snails in that region here in this map you can see the snail infested points only in palakkad region this map contain the snail infested points till 2000 here you can see this is the snail infested points in palakkad region that is one in elapulli and another one in palakkad town later from this region that is from this elapulli and palakkad town it start to spread to the nearby districts and to the nearby states in 2005 total 14 its places were infested by this snail in this map you can find here we have some points in palakkad in malappuram in ernakulam and in pattanamtitta in ernakulam this snail infestation was high and during 2007 there was an attempt to eradicate this snail by uh, dr prema who is a professor in kochin college and they started an eradication campaign to contain these snails during 2007 here you can find some of the newspaper reports about this snail in 1970 to 1982 the major outbreak of this snail in kerala was during 
and during that time the heavily infested places were Pattanandita, Kannu, Trivandrum and Palakkad. These are some of the reports, newspaper reports during that period. And by 2010 about 97 places were infested by this snail. Here you can find many more points. In Palakkad, many more points are added in Malapuram, Kurikod, Kannu, Kasarkod, Ernangulam, almost most of the districts are infested. So in 2010, except Iduki, all the districts were infested by this snail. That is about 13 districts in Kerala were infested by this snail. Here this record is of uh, 2016, about two 17 snail infested sites we got. Here you can find many more points. The red points marked is the reason points that is uh, the snail infestation after 2010 in between 10 and 2016. So after 2016, many more places also got infested. In that, Iduki district also got infested. So now we can tell in Kerala almost all the dis districts are infested by the snail. Based on the record of infested places, we prepared, uh, we did a prediction modeling to find out the potential distribution of Acadna Kulika. We did Maxon modeling in order to find the distribution and based on the potential distribution, uh, the high risk of infestation was found in Ernangulam region and low infestation in Iduki region. In all the introduced places, this snail got established. So what will be the potential for this snail to become a pest? First one, this snail is hermaphrodite. It has both male and female reproductive organ. And during mating, they will exchange sperms among themselves. So each individual will be. So here you can find they are uh, during copulation or mating, they are exchanging the sperms. So each individual will get the sperms and each individual is fertilized and each individual will have the cap capability to build up a new population. In this picture, you can find the snail inside, the eggs inside the body of the snail, and here the snail laying its eggs. Second factor is high reproductive capacity. This snail can lay about 1,200 eggs per year, and each clutch contained eggs of about 60 to 100 number and after laying it will hatch in about 7 days and it will mature in 6 to 7 months, sometimes up to 1 year. Here you can find the eggs of the snail, these are the hatchlings, here you can find the juveniles and this is the adult. We can uh, differentiate these uh, different stages of uh, Acadna Fulica by counting the their worlds. Here, these are the juveniles, and when we when we compare the juveniles with the adult, uh, sorry, these are the hatchlings. When we compare them with juveniles and adult, we can find the color difference as well as by counting their worlds, we can understood whether they are juveniles or whether they are adult. In, in hatchlings, they will have 2.5 worlds, that is two complete worlds and half world. Then when they become four, three months, uh, they will have about 3.5 worlds. When they become adult, they will have seven worlds. So by counting the number of worlds, we can calculate the age of this snail. Another factor is age duration. So whenever unfavorable condition arises, they will undergo a situation. So this snail prefer mostly monsoon season, and we can find these snails more during the rainy season. From the time starting from uh, June to September, these snails will be prevalent, and during northeast monsoon season. So whenever the temperature go much high, or whenever the temperature comes down to low, these snails, they will undergo a situation. 
so during that time what they will do they they will retract their body into the shell and they will cover their body or the opening of the shell with a calcium membrane which is known as epiphragm and at the center we can find a slit there will be a small slit for the passage of air so during summer season we will think the snail got vanished but actually it is hiding under the soil or under the vegetation here you can find this uh, snail in the soil and here you can find some snails in the nodes of coconut so when we check the vegetation in the nodes of coconut or in banana or musa plant we can find uh, these snails hiding in that so this small slit which is uh, present near in the center it is for the passage of air and during estivation this snail is uh, have very uh, they are aggressive they are aggregated together always whether they are in active phase or whether they are in inactive phase so during estivation time also we can see when we check a pocket we can see many number of snails together so it will helps to reduce the loss of water and they will always be aggregated together so this is another factor next is generalist feeder this snail they feed upon about 400 plant species so it is a pest to farmers here in the first picture you can find this is papaya leaf the snail have eaten all the green region it left only the vein in second picture you can find this is yam leaf here also in all these part it has left only the vein region all other region it have eaten and here you can find the snails eating the fish pond so the snails we can find snails near to vegetation and near to the calcium sources available so this fish pond it is a source of calcium they require calcium for their shell so they will depend upon all the sources of calcium sometimes we can see the snails eating the concrete in the compound wall because they require as much calcium for building their shell so they can feed upon many number of uh, plant species next factor is lower predation rate so in their native region they will have predators to control their population but when they are introduced to another region sometimes there due to the absence of natural predators or due to the lower uh, predators uh, num number of predators their population keep on increasing so in kerala we have reported some predators among them the major predators we recorded is feral pigs then crow pheasants then glow worms so feral pigs we have report that these feral pigs they could able to control the population in one region in palakkad that is in nanmara region usually we will keep fences in order to prevent the entry of pigs but in one region they allow the pigs to come in one snail infested region those uh, local peoples they allow the snail to come and these snail have eaten up the these pigs have eaten up the snails so these pigs what they will do they will swallow the snail as such they will take up the snail as such including their shells also they have a capacity to take the snails which are hiding in the soil another major predator is crow pheasant so we have report from ernakulam region that this crow pheasant have uh, reduced the population this crow pheasant it will take up the snails it will uh, hit this snail into any hard surfaces so that it can break its shell and it will take up the flesh but it won't able to feed the large size snails because of the weight of the shell another interesting predator is glow worm larva so we can find when in the field this when a snail is moving along with that three to four glow worms will be larva will be moving and they will bite on the flesh region which is exposed when it bite the snail the snail start to secrete mucus this glow worm larva it will feed upon the mucus and it will enter into the shell and finally it will kill the snail but it's this process it takes a long time even though it is effective predator it will take a long duration it will take hours to kill a snail 
but this larva is also an effective predator. And also we recorded the predation of snail by the rat. So due to all these factors, lower predation rate and other factors, the snail population got established in all the regions. Coming to the spread of the snails, this snail got introduced to many regions either intentionally or unintentionally. The intentional introduction was as a part of pets, food, religious purpose and as a part of curiosity. Uh, during the time of Second World War, this snail has been introduced in Andaman uh, for the jailers as a food. Also it is introduced for religious purpose and as a part of curiosity people are taking it to home and people take it as pet and once they realized it is a menace, they will throw it into wild and that place will become infested by this snail. And unintentional introduction was as a part of trade and transport. This is one of the major pathway we recorded, that is timber depot. This timber depot is in Willington Island, Ernagulam district. In this timber depot, as per the information we uh, got from the quarantine office, Willington Island, most of the timber is imported from the African regions. And we know this Africa, it is a native place. So from these uh, places, the timber is importing to the Willington Island. So usually when a timber or is importing, usually fumigation should be done from the imported region and to the place where it is imported. But this process won't occur properly. So what will happen, whatever things are attached with the timber, everything will be introduced to a new region. And when we check these places, this timber depot, many African snails are there. And from this timber depot, the timber is distributing to many other timber mills in Kerala. So along with the timbers, there is giant African snails are also distributed to the various regions in Kerala. Another major pathway is uh, this sewage farm. It is in Veliyathura, Trivandrum district. Here about 1,500 acres uh, they are using for cultivating the grass using sewage water. And this farm, sewage farm is infested by African snail and from this sewage farm they are transporting grasses to various farms. So along with the grasses the snail will also transporting to the different regions. Another pathway is hitchhiking. Whenever if we place our vehicles in snail infested region, they are, there are possibilities of getting the snail into the vehicle and carrying the snails to new region. And also in many places, due, as a part of curiosity, the snails are taken by adults as well as kids to their home. So it, are, it is also a way of getting entry into a new places. Why we have to manage this snail, giant African snail? So, I already told it is a pest, it feed upon almost 400 plant species. So here in this picture you can see the first picture and second picture the uh, snail on papaya. Second picture you can find the snail on musa. Here you can find the snail on colocasia. So in, mo in almost all the vegetations we can find the snails and they are more favorite to some plants and one among them is papaya. Here you can find this is yam, this is tapioca and here this is the snail's presence in paddy field. So for other vegetation the snail will feed upon uh, the crops but in case of paddy no harm reported based on the uh, feeding of the snail but what they will do these snails they will climb upon the paddy due to its weight, the paddy will get bent or broken. Another major impact is the snail is a menace in human habitation. So here you can find the first picture, 
you can find the snails near to the pipes. So whenever we check a home, uh, the wet condition is prevalent near the bathrooms, in the kitchen, in the washing area. So in all these areas, we can find snails in an infested area. And sometimes it will cause blockage to the pipes. Here you can find snails which are aggregated in compound walls during daytime. They are inactive and we can find aggregated snails in compound walls, in vegetations. And this picture, it shows the damage caused by the snails. So as I told earlier, they require high amount of calcium. So they will feed upon whatever calcium sources are available, they will feed upon that. Here you can find the snails in waste dumping areas and the snails in the roof of a house. So this snail is a menace in human habitation. And in Billington Island, especially in the railway quarters region, uh, due to that region is very highly infested place. So snails during night, they will start to come down. They will move into the houses and people couldn't be able to keep their food properly. So in the beginning what they will do, what they did, they start to keep uh, the food items in a locker, in a cupboard and they will lock it. But now when we checked, we can see Many of the families have been vacated from that quarters due to this menace of this snail. Another major impact is health impact. This snail is, it is a uh, carrier of this angiostrongylus candonensis nematode. So when we, uh, this, uh, when we feed this snail with roe, or without cooking properly. This, there are chances of getting this angiostrongylus cantonensis into our body. This nematode will cause a disease known as isnophilic meningitis. This meningitis have been reported from two places in Kerala. One is from Ernangulam region and one is from Trivandrum region. In Trivandrum region, a 40-year-old lady was affected by this and uh, the doctors detected this angiostrongylus cantonensis from her eyes. So this, uh, this worm, Angiostrongylus candonensis, it will move, if it enter our body, it will move into the brain and will cause meningitis and it, sometimes it will show its appearance in the eyes also. In Ernangulum, it has been reported specifically, especially on kids, one to four years. So these kids, they will play with the snails and uh, by accidentally, they will swallow so if the snail contain the nematode, it will surely enter the body of the kids. And another impact is especially uh, to the night riders. So when we check, when we first went to Kony, um, we, um, as it is a nocturnal, uh, we can observe the uh, actual density of the snail during nighttime only. In daytime, they will be hide under vegetation or under soil. So we weren't able to get the actual population density. So we started to observe them in night. And we found that whenever we walk, we can hear that snail crush, the shell uh, crushing sounds. Because then when we check, we could find many snails on the ground. So these snails, they will move as a group in the grounds, in, on the roads, so whenever a vehicle, especially two-wheeler, when it pass on uh, the roads, there are chances to get the vehicle to skid. So some cases have been already reported uh, based on the vehicle skidding due to the snails. Due to all the impacts caused by this snail, many control measures have been done by the people in the infested region. Especially people will use salt because salt is easily available, it is cheap. So people will use salt as a control measure to manage this snail. Here you can find, here you can find this is a saline solution. People have collected the snail and they put in the saline solution for some time and the snail will get dye. In some places they will put salt directly on the snail body. Here you can find an old la lady, she is hitting the snail with a knife. So people are doing various control measures. When we go to Palakkad region, in one place we found that people are keeping toddy. Toddy 
uh, is a best attractant. We can use beer also. In some places, people are using beer as a best attractant to the snail. So in this study, they are adding furidan. So when the snail uh, come to that by attracting the toddy, when it feed on it, it will die due to this poison. So people, they are doing various control measures to somehow kill these snails. In some places they will throw, by thinking that it is an aquatic snail, they will throw this into water. Some places people will throw the snail into any hard surfaces so that its shell will get broken and this flesh will be eaten by any birds or uh, ants. Here you can find the institutional mechanism. So in the infested regions, the local governing bodies, they will attempt to control this snail. In some places, they will use MNREGS workers uh, to clean the vegetation in the snail infested area. Here you can find uh, these are uh, MNREGS workers. They are clearing the vegetation in the snail infested region. In some places, they will spray chemicals in the whole infested area. Here they are spraying t uh, tobacco decoction copper sulfate solution and this, uh, this is done by the Kandur municipality. They will employ municipal workers to spray the chemicals in the snail infested region. Here you can find municipal workers, uh, they are collecting the snails and after collecting they will use either salt or this copper sulfate solution to destroy the snails. So many uh, different control measures are adopted by the people, uh, by the public, as well as by the local governing bodies to control this uh, problem created by the snail. Now actually how we can tackle this problem? So for managing an invasive species, the important element is public awareness, public education and public participation. So we should aware public about the problem, otherwise it, help, it will uh, cause the spread of this species unintentionally. So how we can aware the public? We can aware the public by keeping posters in uh, public gathering places like a railway station, bus stand, in malls where the people are gathering. Also we can distribute brochures and notices to the public. So public will be aware about the problem or about the species. So it will help to contain the spread, at least we can stop the spread of the species. Another one is public education. So we can educate the public, we can uh, give uh, classes or, uh, to the public uh, about the species and how to manage the species. That is very important in managing a snail, uh, managing invasive species. Another one is public participation. So once we educate the public, we, we can assure the participation of public in various eradication campaigns. So after this public outreach, before going for eradication campaign, we should have an estimation of uh, the snails in the infested sites. So we will know what, uh, what all programs we have to implement in order to control the snail. So in order to estimate the population density, we can either direct, do direct counting or we can do mark recapture method. In newly infested region, anyway, the population will be too less. So in that region, we can go for direct counting. And in highly infested places or medium infested places, we can go for uh, mark recapture method. Here we have, in, for, in mark recapture method, here we have collected some snails and we marked it with nail polish. And after that, we again uh, uh, this, uh, dump these snails in their respective places. And after a few days, again we collected and we checked the number of uh, marked snails collected. So based on that, we can get an idea on the population estimation. So before an eradication program, estimating the population density is uh, very much essential in order to get, in order to check what management strategy we have to do in that particular infested site.
So we won't get much cooperation from such areas. But when we go to rural areas, we can get many people who are coming forward to do this work. So when we compare the rural and urban areas, this management of invasion or invasive species is successful in rural areas compared to the urban areas. And in some areas, the government have taken action against for controlling this snail, but there are some areas where no action have been taken by the governments. And we observed gender bias in problem perception. That is, when we check a home, uh, we can find women are more occupied in regions like kitchen, in washing area. Uh, so in all these areas, the wet is very prevalent, and in snail infested sites, we can find these snails mainly concentrated in these regions. So in some places, men are not aware about this problem. So it's a woman problem. So uh, there is a gender bias. Only women are very much aware of this problem because they are dealing with this snail daily. They are, they are doing control of the snail daily. So men are not aware about this problem in many areas. So in such areas, we found the women are coming forward for uh, controlling the snail. And in the areas where the local governing bodies, who, uh, when if a woman is taking lead role in that, uh, that area we have found the eradication campaign as very successful because uh, the women's, it's uh, the, uh, as it is a, mainly a problem for women, um, the women are coming forward for dealing with this snail. So Acadna fulica, it is a problematic species. We have to uh, eradicate this snail, we have to control this snail. But whenever we do any control on these snails, we have to check uh, other species which also share the same niche. So here we have in Kerala, we have many beautiful natty spe uh, snail species are there. Here you can find many uh, slugs, semi slugs snails are there. So whenever we do any control on this invasive snail, we have to check whether it should affect other native snails also. So we should be take care, we should not harm any other species, and we have to eradicate only the target species. Thank you. If you have any queries, you can ask, I will try to answer. Thank you, ma'am. It's open for discussion. Uh, hello, ma'am. Yes. Uh, I have a couple of questions, maybe uh, three or four. Yes, <laughs> uh, first one is whether we can use this as a feed for the pigs, domesticated pigs. Second question is, uh, you mentioned the fertilization, they need fertilization, whether cross fertilization, because they are hermaphrodites, right? So whether cross fertilization is the role or whether a single animal can lay egg and fertilize the, fertilize the egg with sperm. Is it possible uh, in this particular organism? And uh, third question is, so far, what is the status of this local mollusk? Mm -hmm. Where? this particular uh, invader is prevalent. Any uh, such data is available? Maybe First question, uh, we can use it as a feed for pigs. In many places, it is used as a feed for uh, ducks also. So ducks are also one of the predator of this snail, so we can use. Another thing about fertilization, so usually cross fertilization will take place. Rarely self fertilization have reported. But in that case, uh, the eggs uh, are um, sterile. The eggs didn't hatch. Uh, some reports are there. Then one more question you asked. Ah, yeah, yes. so at least two snails are uh, required for the successful establishment of a colony, right? Just one snail cannot, I mean, unless it is fertilized, one snail cannot establish a colony in a different place, correct? Yeah, if a fertilized snail introduced to a, a new region, it can establish a colony. Only fertilized? Yes, yes. Fertilized one. And the third question was, uh, what is the status of the native mollusk species 
uh, in the area where this particular invader is pre prevalent? Whether any such data is available or? Uh, there is no much decline on the native species. Uh, because these snails, they won't cause any harm to the native species. The only problem we have to check on the control measures we are taking. So we should not apply uh, spraying in wide areas. We, if you are doing point spraying, it will be helpful to conserve our species. And as chemicals um, uh, for controlling the snail, in some places, metaldehyde is using. So this metaldehyde, the problem is, metaldehyde is a bait. Uh, so this acadnephulica, it will attract to it, and it will feed on it, and it will die. But as like other snails will also feed on it. And dogs also feed on this metaldehyde. There are reports that dogs feeding metaldehyde and died. So when we apply for, uh, go for chemicals, we have to check. Myself, uh, Sumesh. Uh, Ma'am, uh, as you show one of your uh, uh, slide is here, uh, that, that means these snails are used for religious purpose. Yes. Can you explain for w what method uh, and uh, how they are used for a religious purpose? Uh, in especially in northern India um, and in Nepal, the people, as this is a, one of the largest terrestrial snails, its shell is very much big. So that for shell purpose, they are bringing the snails and they are using it for puja and all. Okay, okay. One more, please. <laughs> so, uh, whether there was any difference uh, in its population before and after the flood, because I heard some places after the flood, the African snail population was uh, very high in some places. Whether do you have any uh, such data to support this kind of claim? After uh, flood, we got report that uh, new infested sites we reported. So. Along with the waters, the snails may have reached the new places. So I have a question from the data you all presented. So uh, the uh, snail uh, our invasion is less in Idiki. Uh, so uh, is there any particular reason, um, anything related to the temperature and? Yes. In Idiki and Vainan, as they are high altitude region, the population is less. Usually snail won't prefer much higher temperature and lower temperature. So in such areas, uh, we can found the population to be less. Um, apart from the temperature, there is any other factor that uh, help uh, in the any other factor in that region uh, that particularly um, checking the population of the snail any other uh, once more uh, the any other factors in particular region that is in Idiki and Wayanad which is checking the population of the snail that is controlling the population not controlling whenever when a species got uh, introduced to a new region if the climatic condition is uh, favorable for them, they can survive. Otherwise, they won't perish, or otherwise, uh, they won't be able to survive, they won't be able to build up a new population because of these climatic factors. Then, uh, many other factors are there, like predators, but in uh, as far as we take the wide case of Wynard and Yudiki, temperature is a big factor. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. Myself, Vinita. Actually, my doubt is these snails are carrying too much parasite. So, is there any physical change when they are carrying parasite? For example, in some gastropod, there is an like orange color food or something in the body color change when carrying parasite. Is there any physical appearance change? No, this uh, snail is a uh, vector for uh, this nematode angiostrongylus candolensis, but it won't show any physical differences. So only the ana anatomy studies will help for that. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, thank you.
I have a doubt. Yes. Uh, usually, we are seeing a trend that uh, the fireflies is declining right now. The glowworm, you mm -hmm. mentioned, that's a potent, a potent predator. So, uh, have you got any kind of uh, scientific observation regarding the decline of the firefly population and uh, emergence, I mean, uh, of this, emergence, not emergence, I mean, widespread population of this giant African snail? No, decline in population of fireflies, we didn't record it. We didn't have any report. Okay, but uh, the thing is like, uh, I have a first-hand experience with these creatures because so many creatures are there in my homestead area, uh -huh. this uh, giant African snail, and uh, uh, the fireflies is showing a declining pattern of, of population there. Mm -hmm. So, might be a reason, right? Yes. Because it is a potential predator. I, I've seen the picture of the larva, firefly yes. larva over there. You have mentioned it as a glowworm. Uh, it's a common firefly larva, ah, yes. uh, and uh, nowadays we are seeing these fireflies very less. No, so there may be, there might be any relation, right? I don't know whether there is a link between the increase in snail population and predation of fireflies. Any kind of literature Your you have gone through wi while you are doing the research? Uh, no, decline in fire popula firefly population, we didn't got any report, uh, but these fireflies are u introduced uh, into some places in order to control, control this snail. But okay. due to the climatic condition, they, this fire introduced fireflies, they couldn't be able to establish. It's very, so difficult, it to, very difficult to establish a firefly population in a yes. new area. It's very difficult. Yes, yes. Okay. We tried to uh, rearing this uh, fireflies in our lab, but we couldn't, we failed. So we thought we can make a culture and we can just check a biological control on the snails, but we couldn't be able to rear those fireflies. Okay, thank you. And another doubt, uh, one doubt, uh, Leon sir is asking about that food kind of thing. The thing is like, uh, you have mentioned in your presentation that uh, this snail was given to the jail, jail, jail yes. or something jailers. like that. Jailers. Jailers, no? Where? Which place? Andaman. Andaman. And uh, is there any kind of problem associated with the consuming this as a food by human beings? No, no, as we said um, in the case of about pork, we have to heat it, we have to cook it properly. Okay. Otherwise in many places the snail is consuming. In jailers they use to first remove the mucus by rubbing it with ashes and they will cook the flesh and will eat. Okay, so it, it can be used as a food also. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but we are not sure about the parasite in that. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Good morning, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, you said that uh, calcium is needed for the preparation of that shell. So if it is possible to uh, recycle that shell in industrial purpose for re again producing this calcium yes. or any other ornamental purpose for decorating the house yes this snail shell can be used uh, in uh, as for the purpose uh, in kerala in some places they are using this big shell as flower vase then this shell also we can put in if uh, our home garden as a calcium source for the plants thank you So thank you, ma'am. I invite Agnes for the feedback. Namala uh, lavaram childhood onwards. Namma ke ekunna or kariyana i giant African snail ne kurse. But in uh, my opinion, this is a widespread diet in our district in the district. Around 220 infested, infested sites of a pest. I will tell you about it. In a very systematic way, I will explain to you about the distribution, spread, how to manage them. I will tell you about it. Recently, a few months ago, while traveling, Yan just uh porta bagata, Uru uh best opile, Naray giant uh, African snails in a Kana day. 
ബട്ട് തിരക്ക് കാരണം എനിക്ക് അവിടുന്ന് ഇറങ്ങാൻ പറ്റിയില്ലായിരുന്നു പക്ഷേ ഒരു രണ്ടു ദിവസം കഴിഞ്ഞ് ഞാൻ ആ ഭാഗത്തേക്ക് പോയപ്പോൾ അതെല്ലാം വളരെയധികം ക്ലിയർ ചെയ്തിട്ടുണ്ടായിരുന്നു ഐ തിങ്ക് മനിത മാമിനെ പോലെയുള്ള ആൾക്കാരിനെ കുറിച്ച് ഒരുപാട് അവയർനെസ് എല്ലാം കൊടുക്കുന്നത് കൊണ്ട് പബ്ലിക് എല്ലാം ഇതിനെക്കുറിച്ച് വളരെയധികം അവെയർ ആണ് ഇപ്പോൾ അതിനെക്കുറിച്ചെല്ലാം കൺട്രോൾ മെഷേഴ്സ് ഒക്കെ ഒരുപാട് എടുത്തു തുടങ്ങിയെന്ന് എനിക്ക് തോന്നുന്നു സോ ഈ ഈ ഒരു മേഖലയിൽ ഗവേഷണം നടത്താൻ ആഗ്രഹിക്കുന്ന ഒരു ഒരു ആൾക്കാർക്കെല്ലാം ഇത് വളരെയധികം ഇൻഫോർമേറ്റീവ് ആണെന്ന് എനിക്ക് തോന്നുന്നു ഈ ഒരു ക്ലാസ് സോ താങ്ക് യു മാം വൺസ് അഗൈൻ ഐ താങ്ക് ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് സുവോളജി ആൻഡ് ബോട്ടനി ഫോർ ഗിവിങ് എൻ ഓപ്പർച്യൂണിറ്റി താങ്ക് യു താങ്ക് യു ആൾ സോ വി ഹാവ് കം ടു